Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mojax, and today we're off to one of my happy places, the world of boutique rotary mixers. We're looking at the Model X from Henderson Audio. This review was due to release a few weeks back, but like everyone, Henderson Audio have been struggling with rising component costs and inflation generally, so I had to wait to see where their pricing was going to end up. The earlier generations of the Model X were under a thousand euros, but the company just can't deliver the product at that price anymore, and so today you're looking at 1149 euros. All things considered, and bearing in mind the improvements they've made to the feature set in Generation 3, that still makes the mixer a very solid value proposition to me. It's not in the real budget end of things, but still a lot more affordable than much of the competition. The mixer is completely hand-built in Poland, even down to the surface mount components, which is very much not the norm. I try not to open up review gear unless I really have to, so I was delighted that Henderson sent me some pics of what's going on inside the mixer, as well as explanations for a lot of what you're seeing. I tried adding all that into this script, and frankly it went on forever, but I know it will be useful information for a lot of audio nerds, so I'm going to throw it all up on screen now, and if you like, you can pause the video to read each section. Okay, so that's a lot of nerdy stuff, which I can actually just summarise by saying that the attention to detail Henderson Audio have put into this product is incredibly impressive. It's when you start to consider the time and effort put into the design and build that you can easily understand why these things cost what they do. But now it's time for me to give you my actual DJ perspective. The first thing to note about the Model X is that it is pretty small. Here it is sat next to a Range 72 Mark II. It's also very light, and so these two things combined mean that the mixer is very portable indeed. It will fit comfortably into a record bag for transport. It still feels solid and reassuring though, with a very industrial looking textured matte finish on the steel enclosure, and all the pots are firmly bolted to the faceplate. On the subject of pots, those for the isolator and main channel controls are the venerable Alps Blue Velvets. These have been staples of the rotary scene for many years, and so many heads will know exactly how they feel already, and I'm a big fan myself. It's a two-channel mixer with each channel switchable between phono and line using a push-button switch. You have two options for how you approach the gain structure on the mixer. You can run a fixed gain level and leave yourself headroom on the main volume pots, with unity gain being around 3 o'clock. That's the more traditional rotary style. Alternatively, you can hit a switch switch to activate the gain controls which enable the gain circuit and then you can set pre-fade gain as you wish. I prefer the more traditional style myself but the gain mode could come in very handy especially if you're switching between sources with very different levels or if you use hi-fi carts with especially low outputs. The gain stage itself offers a ton of headroom. When you don't have gain mode enabled, the same knobs instead control the effects send level for each channel, which I'll come back to later. What's noteworthy though is that those knobs are not positioned above each channel, but instead are both above channel 1. This is initially off-putting, but once I was used to the Model X, I found it perfectly usable. It just takes a little bit of muscle memory to develop. Also found on each channel are low and high EQs. With 30 dB cut and 10 dB boost, they are not subtle, but are useful tools, and they enable you to easily correct the sound of, say, an old record to match other sources. On high-quality rotaries, I rarely find myself using channel EQs. With great summing, they are largely superfluous for mixing, but I'm still glad they're there as an option.
As we move up the mixer we get to the isolator which is quite unusual in a good way. It's laid out horizontally which makes it more of a performance tool than say the vertical one which master sounds favour and the large knobs mean it's easy to get comfortable with cutting and boosting frequencies. Henderson are keeping their cards close to their chest when it comes to the exact frequency cutoffs etc but it's a multi slope design which seems quite aggressive in the low end but smoother in the mids and highs than with other isolators I've used. All I can really do is demonstrate it in action for you a little bit and hope that you can hear what I mean. But yeah, suffice it to say, I do love the isolator. With the 10 dB boost you have no fear of taking the sound wildly out of control and there is that smoothness to the highs which makes riding hi-hats an absolute joy. Great stuff. Moving on to connectivity, the master out is on balanced XLRs and there are two unbalanced outputs, Booth with its own level control and record. On this third generation of the mixer, the record output is pre-master to keep levels consistent when recording. All good there. The power supply is an external 24 volt type with a barrel connector. From a convenience perspective I always prefer an internal power supply with an IEC socket, but I get why companies like Henderson Audio choose external for sound quality reasons, plus the Model X is so compact internal isn't really an option. Queuing is spot on with, from what I can tell, the same illuminated switches on each channel as the ones master sounds use. They have a good positive action and you can enable queuing on both channels at the same time if you wish. There's also a very nicely balanced Q master blend knob, pre-master which means using in-ear monitors as I do now is totally comfortable. There's plenty of output volume and both sizes of headphone socket with split Q being the only thing missing in an otherwise perfect Q circuit. And that brings us to the VU meters which are a key part of the aesthetics on a mixer like the Model X. In this case they are original vintage UK made CFAM units and are backlit and very responsive to input. When you enable Q on a channel that signal is routed to the left hand VU meter which I don't believe was the case on earlier models and that's very convenient. Whilst modern LED meters can do a perfectly fine job of helping you monitor your levels, there's just something more organic and natural about having proper analog VU meters like these on a mixer and I love the experience. When it comes to the effects end and return, I've just had to reach a point of acceptance, which is that most rotary mixer buyers don't really use effects in the same way as me. I am always looking for a way to achieve echo and reverb outs for going between tempos and genres and a post fader effects loop is essential for that way of working but most rotary users aren't doing that so pre-fader simply adding effects on top of their music is all that's required and that's what you find on the Model X. It does work great, I hooked up my trusty old EFX 500 and got some great results which you'll hear shortly. There is lots and lots of headroom on the send controls so almost any effects unit can be accommodated and with the third generation the Model X now has an additional option to switch the effects over to a master insert making it usable with even more hardware. So yes personally I'd always prefer a post fader option but for the average Model X buyer there is nothing to complain about here.
We've covered the nerdy stuff, we've covered the features, so let's get on to the really important thing, the sound. Put simply, it is fantastic. I've tried it on multiple sets of studio monitors and a couple of bigger sound systems, and it just delivered every time, whatever genre of music I put through it. The highs and mids are precise with tons of resolution and detail. The bass has warmth and presence, and there's no sign of any unwanted distortion or crunch, whether running digital sources through the line inputs or playing vinyl through the superb phono preamps. Those responded well with mid and bass forward cartridges like the Geco Impact, as well as more crispy carts like the Autophon Mark II Club and Elite. Whichever sound profile you put into the Model X is the one that comes out. There's really not a whole lot of coloration going on at all. Everything is just very transparent. And the amount of headroom available at every stage of the mixer means that you can really crank things without fear of nastiness creeping in. But where the mixer really shines is where all the best boutique rotaries do in the summing performance. The curve on the main level pots isn't quite logarithmic or standard linear, I can't quite figure it out to be honest, but in use it enables incredibly smooth blends with zero EQ work required. Get two in-key tracks perfectly beat matched on the Model X and you can flow back and forth between the two almost imperceptibly. By any standards, the way the mixer sums sources together is fantastic, but when you also consider that the Model X is substantially more affordable than a lot of other boutique rotaries, then it starts to sound like an absolute bargain. For such a young and small company, this is truly impressive stuff. So there you go my thoughts on the Model X from Henderson Audio. This thing has the quality that all of the best boutique analog mixers have, which is that when I listen to music through it, it makes me smile, it brings me joy. And the reason for that is the clarity and detail that it offers. You are hearing nuances and subtleties in your records that you just don't hear with lesser equipment, especially, you know, like lower end digital gear. The difference when you're listening to this and some of that will be night and day. So the sound is absolutely on point not just in a kind of refined home studio setting where you might be listening through studio monitors or hi-fi speakers, but I also think the Model X sounds great on a bigger system as well, and it's eminently portable. Like, this thing is tiny, really, and it's very lightweight. I've been carrying it around in a courier bag, so it makes it very easy to take it out with you to a club or a bar or a listening bar or something like that. Plug it in and immediately impart a bit of your own personal sound signature upon the room. And I think that's a very valuable thing indeed. The construction is absolutely on point. You know, it feels fantastic. You can feel the love and passion that's gone into building it. And I genuinely believe you can hear that love and that passion as well. This thing is a thorough recommend for me. It is a superb piece of kit. In the comments this week, tell us about the piece of DJ gear in your life that brings you the most joy. Every time you fire it up, it makes you happy. It makes you smile. It could be a mixer, a turntable, a controller any piece of equipment in your rig that makes you grin from ear to ear. Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel and you turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time. <laughs>